Good morning. I'm Terry Vesperis. I'll be uh, facilitating this program, uh, serving as Masters of Ceremony. And we'd like to invite you once again to just relive this great day and this great memory of this great place here. And uh, to an, and to an error, a building that you see behind me on the, the left of us. And of course, we're here today to remember the old Hilo County Jail. It was built in the late 1890s and was used to hold county jail detainees until about 1978. Now after that it functioned as office space and storage for HCCC until about 2000 when it was officially condemned. Now starting next week the old building will be torn down and we wanted to take this time to not only gather everybody uh, to remember but say goodbye to the old jail. Before our next speaker comes, Warden Peter Cabreras, he's gonna say a few words. Uh, we'd like to thank him for over 40 years. Just imagine you know, all the new intakes back then. HPD would drop them off through these gates here. This was like our strip search room. Actually, today we were talking. It's almost 44 years of public service to corrections. And as a proud Hilo native, this is important now. He graduated from Kau High and he served in the U.S. National Guard for eight years. And later, as destiny would have it, his career in the corrections um, began in 1975. So he was just barely 23 years old at that time when he started. So fantastic to hear that. And you know, in talking with the warden, it, it, it's so amazing the stories, the passion, the drive, you know, that comes yeah, out. This was South Buffalo, and we used to have wing cells here. Back then, it was uh, solid steel bars like this here coming down with a gate. Really interesting story. On the first day of his illustrious career here at HCCC, the head jailer at the time oriented the warden now on how to do a head count. So the two jail guards took him to a secure compound where he noticed one individual walking around, of course, dressed in white t-shirt, blue jeans, and rubber slippers, you know. And then the one jail guard called out, head count. And then the individual came in front of him. The guard read out his name and the individual acknowledged here. The jail then guard then said, count clear. <laughs> he says, ah, those days. You know, he, he nothing else much to do to a prisoner count of one. And needless to say, Warden is very skilled at trumps, ping pong, and chess, <laughs> you know. So, but like the Big Island and around us, you know, um, the head counts have certainly changed. And on a more serious note, he's grateful for the mentorship that he's had all these great years and support over the great years. And so today, we are pleased to have over 44 years, Warden Peter Cabarros to say a few words. Good morning. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, upstairs, unfortunately, uh, it's kind of, you know, we had a fire upstairs. So. You know, I have so much stories to share about my career here, and especially working my first day at this uh, facility, the old jail. But, you know, and somehow my career started before this old jail here, where, you know, I used to get into trouble with the Hawaii Police Department back then. <laughs> And a group of officers from the Kau District approached me one day and said, Hey, Peter, before you get into trouble and up in jail, why don't you go apply at, the old, uh, apply at the jail? So I submitted my application, and apparently all those officers signed a letter recommending me for hire here at the jail. And, you know, I, I still have that letter somewhere in my... Um, Files. Yeah, so on the upstairs they would have duplicate wing cells. My interview here. But they also would have individual cells that we would call bucket cells. I remember two questions. Uh, one was like, what would you do if that big guy, and just so happened this big inmate was coming in at a time, started acting up, and what would you do? And not knowing the procedures, I, I my response was, I would do whatever I needed, you know, for the security of the facility, even if I get lickings. <laughs> yeah. In fact, we may have one of the other school doors out. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to Senator Lorraine Inouye. You notice the um, old style? They always had the arch Marcus, doors. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. She's been a big advocate for the Department of Public Safety yeah, in our efforts to improve overall HCCC and also remove the old jail. An experienced legislator, she has formerly served in the Hawaii State Senate for 10 years, from 1998 all the way to 2008. And additionally, Senator was Hawaii County Mayor 
You guessed it. Anybody? Yeah. From 1990 yeah. to 1992. Just staff staff room by putting these walls. This is one cell, right? Yes, one cell. Help me join welcome, Senator Lorraine Dinoy. Don't mind me, but I'm getting kind of teary. <laughs> and only because this has been my project for 30 years. I have to tell you, I forgot to add to my story that the police department, those that were trained here, because they weren't police officers yet on the street, on, their, on the cars, they were called jail guards. They had the jail guards. Their duty was walking through downtown Milo. And you know the security for downtown was super. And um, but what was uh, interesting is, if you were drunk, <laughs> and <laughs> and they would they would end up in jail. Oh, the police guys used to bring them to the jail so they'd stay overnight here. And that I knew because I had an uncle who used to come here. <laughs> <laughs> really? When I got elected to the um, county council back in the 80s, I chaired the um, committee on um, economic development. But this was one of my projects. My hope was to see what's going to happen with this building. And the first thing they tell you is it's, they don't say we think. They say it's a historic building. You know, it what we didn't keep up with the building. There are issues. Well, what I forgot to mention was the inmates. Part of the activity was sewing nets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I remember oh, that. My husband cross used to tell me. under the Cayetano administration, I continued the fight to see what we can do with this building either retrofit and add more capacity for the jail system. Um, and then they say, you know what, we don't have money to do environmental you know, assessments. So OK, but we add, added some monies then just to do the EIS and the assessments. In fact, this old dryer when the inmates started up sounding like one of those 747, you know, I mean, they're whining, and you know, like, oh, yeah, yeah. So noisy. I can remember how many public safety directors I think I went through as well. For me, the only historical thing about this building was that there were ghosts. <laughs> My colleagues used to laugh when I tell that story. You know, times have changed um, over the last several years. Always and the papers has carried it for years and years about the overcrowding in this facility. It's so different. I mean, if I had my druthers clean up the place, probably, um, because it's a main thoroughfare on Wayanui Nui and Komohana, um, and uh, transition it to something of a redevelopment. Uh, but I was hoping that because it's still the state lands, that we could have generated some income so that we can either do a commercial and give the monies back to, you know, um, PSD. Um, however, I think we probably, the needs will be to remain within the agency so that we can increase the capacity for whether it's holding cells. Uh, and now I understand it could be several beds that will be built, you know, so hopefully I'll urge the department, you know, let's not wait. We may need more. But rest assured that uh, we'll, we'll see that um, the project gets cleaned up, not halfway done. But let me also share with you, and that's why I was kind of teary, because my first husband, when he got into the police department, Ronald Gichak, who, who, um, who died um, while in service um, in 1990, uh, his first job was here. And um, we used to call him Uncle Tom Nahiva. Um, I think that was his last name, if I remember. Nahiva. Oh, I, I remember. <laughs> anyway, that was his boss. And so he was trained here. You know, so all the stories that we used to see about the building, and that's why I say I think the only historical thing about this place are the, are the nighttime things that you see hanging around. <laughs> or you hear no different than what they tell us about the Capitol building. Lieutenant Thomas Nahiva, uh, he was a police lieutenant in charge of the uh, 
Hawaii County Police uh, Vice Squad at the time. But he also was responsible for the security of the jail. So he would make his rounds and, you know, he was really strict. I mean, you, your shoes had to be polished, uniform starts and pressed, and you always sort of, you know, had attention. It's everything we had to do was professional, just like the head count that uh, Terry had shared with all of you. But what's so funny too is like after the head counts, with only one inmate, I mean, it's like, what are you gonna do for the rest of the day? So we, with the one inmate and the two other officers, we would play trumps, ping pong, or chess. And I got very good at it. But we still would do our head count. We would like have our log book with us. <laughs> and on the hour, he would like, head count. And we call out, you know, they meet here, then you just log it in the book, then you continue to play again. <laughs> yeah. So it was like that. Back then, we could do things like that. Today, it's entirely different. But, you know, I can't really write a book about this facility, the old jail, my memories, and uh, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. Um, you know, I've been here, next month will be 44 years. Uh, my career is coming to an end, and, uh, but I made a lot of friends, and uh, um, I'm, I'm just thankful that I could be here today. Uh, and maybe this year to see the process of demolishing this old jail. It's going to be sad, but, you know, uh, we have to move on. And, uh, and I think it's best for the facility. Yeah. Well, thank you.